नमो नम सब टूडे दिस विल बी थर्ड सेशन ऑफ शास्त्र सेतु टॉक सीरीज एंड टूडे टाइटल विल बी पारेनीज अष्टाध्याय अ कंप्यूटेशनल मॉवल सो स्पीकर फॉर टूडे इज राधिका गोयल हू इज एन आई टी मैनेजमेंट प्रोफेशनल विद ओवर ट्वेंटी इयर्स ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस इन लीडरशिप रोल्स इन फोर्चून ट्वेंटी कंपनीज सो इन दिस टॉक सी विल इंट्रोड्यूस महर्षि पारेनीज वर्क द अष्टाध्याय also how the concepts laid out by panini more than 2500 years ago are relevant in today's cutting edge technology is of computer science and artificial intelligence uh, this talk will also include vyakaran versus grammar ashtadhyay's structure its object oriented concepts and insights for natural language processing so i request uh, ms radhika goel to please uh, continue the talk नमस्कार थैंक यू सो मच फॉर द इंट्रोडक्शन एंड आई एम रियली लुकिंग फॉरवर्ड टू टॉक टू द ऑडियंस हियर लेट मी शेयर माय स्क्रीन फर्स्ट I request all others to kindly mute their microphone. Kindly mute. Can you see my screen? Yes, Bagini. Okay. <coughs> slide show mode is that better? Or? You might want to do the slide show mode. Yes. Okay. Yeah. so as with all the um, like you know uh, shastra talks we will start with a mangalam so om shri ganeshaya namaha uh, the first mangalam is for the goddess saraswati for the education saraswati namastubham varade kamarupini vidyarambham karishyami siddhirbhavam tumme sada so um, the next one is uh, relating to the uh, the topic that we are going to be presenting that is vyakarana and panini sashtadhyayi so this is a uh, mangalam or tribute to the uh, maharshi panini so yenakshara samamnayam digamya maheshwaram krutyam vyakaranam proktam tasmay paninaye namaha and the last mangalam is for all the three munis uh, and uh, like now we'll go over the details on uh, of uh, how the, what the mangalams mean okay vakya karam vara ruchim bhashya karam patanjalim paninim sutra karam cha pranatosmi munitayam so 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 basically whenever we start any of our um, like you know it's as a tradition we start with the mangala shloka uh, and there are three reasons for doing uh, like mangalam you know so it is supposed one of the reason it is alaukika and uh, then avagita and shishtachara so uh, the three reasons being one is it's a parampara like you know from guru to shishya that's how uh, it always starts with the mangal shloka to have a success in whatever we are doing and the uh, uh this uh, like you know alaukika is basically you know it's uh, uh, it's it's a different level of energy that you get when you do a mangalam that's not uh, not in the uh, not in the laukika aspect and the third one is it has to be appropriate like for example today our topic is ashtadhyayi so we will be doing a mangalam uh, to uh, like maharshi panini Uh, if we are doing something on mimams uh, uh, darshan it won't be a mangalam to nyaya shastra or something like that so it has to be relevant so these are the three main uh, things and as a tradition uh, we would be uh, starting off with the mangalam is so the next slide so today our topic is basically we'll be covering um, can you see? are you seeing the screen of the no. participants yes, as well please. on zoom or the full screen Uh, that is our choice so we can choose to see full screen or that's left to us okay awesome so we'll have like you know 
uh, we'll be covering some topics about what is vyakaranam and uh, like you know samskritam and then panini and uh, uh, like you know finally the ashtadhyayi and how is it relevant to today's modern uh, world okay so all right so um you know in um, the indic knowledge or indic sciences right um it's a holistic view of knowledge okay so like how we have mathematics and science i think uh, i'm sure in the previous two sessions uh, some of my colleagues have covered but i know there are a lot of new folks today so just wanted to give a like you know overview on like what exactly are we covering today and what is the purpose uh, of the topic like you know the relevance of the topic and what is the purpose so uh, the indic knowledge is basically uh, the like the whole holistic view is divided into 18 or so vidyasthanani so it is called ashtadasha vidyasthanani and um, uh, these are just the classification and uh, like of the knowledge uh, the whole complete vedic knowledge okay so uh, like you know being even uh, uh, like being from indic background and uh, from the tradition where all the whole uh, vedas and shastras have come up um, I'm not sure about uh, many of you, but personally, I can say that it was a very, uh, like I, I, basically, I was pretty clueless when it came to what is the, uh, how much, what is, what is Indic knowledge and like, you know, where do all this, um, like, you know, patterns fit, like, you know, okay, we know there is something like Ramayana, Mahabharata, and there are some Vedas, and that's pretty much, uh, like, you know, uh, the exposure or knowledge we uh, usually get, right? But then what exactly are Vedas? What is the whole, uh, like, you know, how is the Shastras laid out of, right? So, uh, so, uh, uh, so here is what uh, the whole classification or the structure is like. We have the first level, like any, all knowledge is uh, the high, like level of uh, Vedas. Okay, so we have four Vedas, Rig Veda, Yajur Veda, Sama Veda, and Atharva Veda. So this, uh, this is forms the topmost layer from which all the knowledge branches off. So um, uh, like, and then there is, uh, from Vedas, then there is a, a brand called Vedangas. Anga means a part, right? So for the body of Veda, like just like your body parts help to feed the main body, right? The Vedangas help uh, to um, like, you know, uh, to understand the Vedas. So in Vedangas, we have six uh, Vedangas that are there. Uh, there is Siksha, Alpa, Jyotishyam, Vyakaranam, Niruktam, and Chanda. So Vyakaranam or what uh, is like you know what commonly people know it as grammar false is in is one of the vedangas okay one of the six vedangas and um so we have four as the six vedangas which makes it 10 right out of 18 and then there is also uh upavedas upavedas are basically from vedas right each veda maps to an upaveda and it is the practical application of the Vedas, the knowledge in the Vedas to our everyday life. Um, like, you know, for example, uh, from Rig Veda came Ayurveda, which is a holistic, uh, like Ayu means life, right? The holistic uh, 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 well-being, right? From Yajur Veda came uh, Dhanur Veda, which is the science of warfare, politics. Uh, from Sama Veda, again, we have all the Gandharva Veda, uh, which is an Upaveda, which deals with uh, like you know music, dance, poetry, all kinds of uh, you know fine arts. Then Atharva Veda is um, Artha Shastram, uh, which is uh, like you know uh, Kautilya, and we know about all the Chanakya Nitis and stuff like that. So the practical aspect of Vedas are Upavedas. So we have Vedangas, then we have. Uh, um, like, you know, four uh, Upavedas and also their upa, Upangani. So like, you know, like, for example, if Anga is a, uh, is a part, like, so if, if the Veda Purusha, if the Anga is like, for example, let us say hand, then Upangani are even like the fingers, like, you know, even uh, further, um, uh, like in the a part of the parts, kind of. So 
we have uh, the four main upanganis which are puranam nyaya mimamsa and dharma shastram so uh, that is the whole ashtadasha vidyasthanani in some classification you will even see chaturdasha or 14 uh, so but like you know so it's very well organized shastra knowledge uh like you no know, so we have vedas and then we have this whole vedangas that support our understanding of the vedas uh so so here if we call like this is the veda purusha or the like the you know, main vedas and where all the knowledge like anything that is knowable is stored <laughs> say you can find it in the vedas and uh, let like you know like uh, and i encourage to have a very open mind because uh, like you know when i heard that anything that is knowable in vedas it's like wow how can uh, anything that is knowable be in one source but then as you uh, see the shastras and how they are laid out it becomes very clear that the knowledge uh, that is there in the vedas is very tremendous okay so uh when so we can if we consider the veda the prishas and six vedangas right so we have uh, uh we have talked about it i'll briefly uh, mention about each and then how vyakarana fits into the whole thing so uh, uh, like you know and uh, i want to uh, thank like our um, um vyakarana guru uh, tilak varya and also um samya unifer uh uh for many of the videos that they have put online which gives lot of uh, information uh and so okay so when we're talking about vedangas here so you have the core vedas and then uh, the six vedangas right so if you see there is um, there is uh, different reasons for each of these six vedangas there is swarupa raksha swarup means so basically we had the oral tradition of passing vedas from guru to shishya by nare like you know uh, by repetition and learning right so for that we have uh, shiksha and chanda so what is shiksha is basically the pronunciation or the how how is how do you pronounce a particular letter so if there is um, for example um, like you know any word how do you exactly say it uh, with the right innotations and connotations uh, chanda is again a meter like you know like how you have a rhythm and in poetry so the because of the vangmay tradition the chanda or the meter is very important the, uh, for the memory and the rhyming and repetition so it's uh, all of our uh, there are different kind of chandas like anushtuk Uh, chanda or um, so what what they do is they give a particular uh, like you know so many uh, consonants so many vowels and this is the rhyming that needs to be so in a higher level siksha and chanda what they do is they protect the uh, uh, vedas in a way that it is transferred from uh, like you know from one uh, from guru to shishya in in its whole entirety and not get distorted and because of this uh, support structure is why even after so many thousands of years we still are able to um, uh, like you know uh, to have uh, to uh, to uh, to have such a clear view of what it is in the original form means uh, even written or um, like you know data destruction anything could happen but this oral parampara has kept uh, the vedas so intact and available even today um so then there is also the the next part is the artha raksha so what is the meaning that is there like you know for example if we don't know what a word really means um uh, then uh, like you know our understanding becomes little bit clouded so there is vyakaranam and niruktam uh, that are um, responsible for artha raksha so uh, so vyakaranam is the shastra for the right words including the science of linguistics sorry so and uh, like you know and niruktam is the etymology like you know what's the origin of the words and so if you see here vyakaranam it uh, in the veda prishad translates the mouth and niruktam translates uh, 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 like you know if you see to the ears because uh, like you know etymology and uh, like you know when when you uh, when you're telling the words right that is uh, vyakarana and of all of that vyakarana is supposed to be the most important vedanga okay so it helps us understand all the knowledge or shastric knowledge that is out there uh, 
And then the finally, then uh, there is uh, Anushthana Raksha. So basically, uh, this has done with the Kalpa, which is the procedure and ceremonial Shastra, you know, like how to do a Yaga. All. So it is represented by hands. And then there is uh, Jyotishyam, which is the astronomy and astrology which is quite popular nowadays and uh, like you know that is with eyes because uh, this started of basically what is the right uh, timing to do the ceremonies or the or yagnas and all so so these are this is a high level view of all the vedangas and how vyakaranam fits into the vedangas so I'll take a pause and see if anyone has any questions uh, or um, any comments on on the uh, like you know the 18 vidyasthanani that we just discussed. So let me check my chat. Madam, excuse me. I am Dr. Rangarajan. I would like to know whether we need any pre-course to be uh, to attend uh, to understand it fully, or we'll be able to manage with this. We are basically all uh, mostly engineer engineering uh, professionals. Uh, the clarification uh, will be. Uh, <laughs> You cannot you. be closer to uh, basically just like you know one year back. Uh, honestly did not even know what was ashtadhyayi okay so even my journey started from completely being uh, uh, like you know like uh, educated working in the corporate world and then just there was some things that tweaked interest in the shastric knowledge so uh, this uh, so i am if uh, like you know if i can understand and uh, like you know give an overview i'm sure any anybody on this call <laughs> will be able to yeah. and i'm going Whatever to keep we are it... told so far we are able to understand but uh, uh -huh. should we go through some other basic courses or anything like that it's just i wanted to thank you madam thank you uh -huh. yes so and also i'm going to be uh, like um, i think most of the uh, like audience here are from different backgrounds we may have some from engineering background some from uh, a little bit of arts background so even though if there are the computer concepts i try to keep it um, i'll try and keep it to a very um, like you know understandable level so feel free to um, stop and ask in case of any questions okay so yeah versus typically four legs are part of very kind of you. Thank you. Yes. Bagini, some of the chat uh, we are side sidewise replying. You go ahead. Okay. Awesome, Anujwarya. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, all right. So I'm sharing again. Okay. Let's continue on. Mashua Mahodia. Yeah. Can you see my screen again? Yes. Yes. Just continue sharing. Don't break that thread. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. So, and also before we move on to the actual uh, full screen, one second. Okay. Uh, there is also some um, a very important concept called Anubandha Chatushtaya. So, uh, you know, when we start any, um, like, you know, any action, there is a purpose why we do it, right? So, uh, like, you know, so this, uh, it is, our uh, Shastric knowledge is very uh, logical and structural, and I was very surprised to realize this. So before we start any, um, like, you no know, talking about or inception of any Shastra, it's always, uh, like, you no, know, we take a moment to understand what is called the Anubandha Chatushtaya. Okay, so there is basically four components or four connections uh, that come into play, okay? So uh, the first one is Adhikari. Adhikari is a qualified student. So here is, um, I want to point out here that, you know, this is how some uh, like Indic uh, knowledge is a little bit different from uh, the uh, Western uh, knowledge. Uh, see, when you're doing, for example, uh, like, you know, when you have uh, math or physics, right? What, like uh, the component of Adhikari is missing. Um, like, you know, when you're doing an experiment, uh, the, uh, there is no, uh, uh, in according to Indic knowledge, the outcome or the way we are doing the experiment results even on the perception of the person who is doing the experiment. 
okay so there is always that uh, component of a human observation like for example um, uh, we are uh, there is uh, like you know we are doing something in a straight line straight view angle and somebody is looking at from uh, for example 90 degrees or so their view of what they are seeing in the experiment may be a little bit different i'm just giving a very simple uh, like you know visual uh, component right and what we see from uh, like you know straight on maybe a different angle of the same object that we get right so when we uh, make our observation notes it will be a little bit different uh, from what i may make and what other person may make uh, correct and also same thing with for example uh, the one of our uh, in the vedic sciences classes we saw um, uh, the adhikari or the person who is learning uh, for example in astronomy or we are uh, talking about uh, like you know finding out the planetary positions right if there is a person who is in a scientific background who want who if they want to send for example a, a, a moon landing or so the way this uh, they uh, consider the planetary positions will be a lot more precise uh, than somebody who may just uh, want to know when the eclipse is so that they take the necessary protection uh, right so maybe a common uh, like householder who does not want to be exposed to the rays or extreme uh, uv rays during the eclipse so they may not need that precise a planetary concept or calculations than someone who is uh, uh, just uh, saying it. So Adhikari plays a very important role uh, in uh, in Shastric knowledge. So here now, like, you know, we have all of us here, right? So, uh, so we are all Adhikaris and each of us may have a different purpose or may bring a different uh, reason for why we are doing the Shastric studies. Okay, so here, um, uh, so there is um, and there is a clear definition of what an adhikari is. Like uh, there is single pointed mind, like you know, uh, chitta eta ekagrata, and then chitta shuddhi, the purified mind. And also, then uh, there is this concept of uh, dosha. There is um, in, in within an adhikari or within a mind observation, they say that there are three kinds of doshas or faults. And uh, there is vikshepa, uh, mala, and <clears throat> So uh, of all these three doshas, uh, what is said is uh, basically if you have uh, two doshas, then, um, then you're a qualified adhikari. So what are the two, two doshas that you cannot have is basically uh, mala, that means no impure impure thoughts or impure purpose of learning the shastra, right? And then, uh, then there is also... Um, this one uh, restlessness or impurity from uh, like you no know, vikshepa but then you, you the third dosha you can still have that is avarna that means uh, uh, like you know that means not having the knowledge or being ignorant so that is okay because through the process of learning the shastra that purification happens so in the three doshas for a good adhikari um, like you know you have to be free of at least two of these three doshas okay so that is the who is a qualified student so for vyakarana right anybody um, with the current when as we go through the presentation you will see the current applications also so there is a very good reason on um, like you know we see the fields of artificial intelligence natural processing language uh, which almost i think from the engineering colleges now a whole chunk of kids like uh, are going into that direction Right. So when we were in uh, school at that time, computer science was like that. So every person was into so wanting to get into software or telecom because that was the uh, budding uh, technology at that time. So right now it is all about machine learning, uh, data analytics, uh, AI. And so any of the adhikaris like, you know, who are interested in those fields and who has the wisdom of what is already been um, there are a very good qualified students. Okay. And then the Vishaya, as we talked about, is Vyakarna, which is one of the Vedangas. Okay. So here there is an example of Vishaya, like, you know, um, uh, Jiva Brahma Ekaita. So all most of the Shastras um, have this Vishaya. You know, it's basically connecting uh, with, uh, uh, like, you know, the limited to the unlimited. So, and then the Prayojana, or what is the 
a result. Um, and you know, this is uh, like, I like to say that these two Peojanas pretty much cover anything and everything under the sky. So, Atyantika Dukkha Nivritti, this is for Nyaya Shastra, it's complete cessation of sorrow. So not just a temporary cessation of sorrow, but complete cessation. And then there is Paramananda Prapti, which is like attainment of supreme happiness. So uh, anything that like, you know, uh, all the Purusharthas, anything will fall in this Prayojana. And of course, Moksha is the most uh, like, you know, qualified. And then there is the Sambandha or which is the relationship between like Adhikari and Vishaya, Adhikari and Prayojana. So this is the, uh, like, you know, so what, uh, like how would we apply uh, the topic as a Adhikari and what is the, what is the application? So, and without a purpose, there is uh, like there is no point, right? So, what this gives uh, the Anubandha Chaturstra gives kind of a purpose and a direction to the students. So, the next one is before we get into the actual, I wanted to just give a brief um, idea about uh, like you know the language of the shastras, right? So, Vyakarna is about um, like you know as we saw, it is about the right word Shabda um, of uh, like you know of like which language is it right it is sanskritam and so why there are so many languages what is different about sanskrit or why is it um, that it is there is so much of or lately there is so much of surge of interest in sanskritam right so if you notice right there um, our uh, one of the very core reasons why sanskrit is so um, uh, such a good uh, natural language is because it completely mimics our uh, the way our uh, like you know voice box or the vocal apparatuses from human perspective okay so we have like you know how if you uh, study how the physiology of the whole voice is generated right there is uh, like or throat and then there is i will not go into very much detail but this palate then uh, murdha uh, when you touch that Danta and Oshta. So the whole alphabet or Varnamala is mapped on this is uh, like, you know, where is the Uttati or where is the origin of the sound in our vocal cords, right? So if you see like, you know, um, uh, here, like uh, the way our alphabets are or the right this is all like you know it comes from if you notice carefully if you when you pronounce these words you'll see that uh, words originate from kanta or uh, and then uh, there is church so even though when as we learn um, alphabets when we were in school uh, the kind of concept or mapping like you know uh, we just learn because we are learning to read and write but there is a whole science on how it is mapped with uh, vocal apparatus so here I want to give an example. For example, right? If you're, uh, if uh, you're uh, for automotive engineering uh, students here, uh, if the car is a diesel car, uh, would you be putting like you know petrol and trying to run it with the same efficiency? Uh, no, right? So um, and this, uh, so it is something similar to that. So here the whole uh, the, our vocal apparatus is to make a is mapped to these kind of sounds and any sound that can be made with this apparatus is a part of the Varnamala that is there. So that's what is so amazing. So the complete sounds that a human person can make is mapped into the into Sanskrit Varnamala. There are 64 alphabets um, like you know or Varnas and I'll go into those a little bit uh, like you know a superficial way and so th the reason why i was covering on why it is uh, why sanskrit is uh, such a natural map to the voice box says uh, it has a very special status on why it can be used later as a natural language okay uh, now uh, see uh, if you uh, see few days back in computer science right uh, we had the star wars movies r2d2 uh, the way they converse, right? It is like, uh, it's almost like bits and bytes, like, you know, uh, correct the computer simulation, uh, how it is. And now when you talk to Alexa, it's like she even tries to give me an Indian accent sometimes and wants to ask if she should talk to me in Indian accent. So uh, that's how it is like to close to our voice box as it is. Because uh, see, uh, like, you know, I don't know about it. when you see students, a whole bunch of them, if you say, uh, like, you know, 
one this apple and then showed one more apple and say how many are there it's very easy to say there are two apples right it's visual it's a natural language and they can understand but if you put it in the abstract form of one plus one is two then there is a little bit of barrier on understanding it's not so natural to understand that right so we have a lot of uh, students who are a little bit uh, uh, like a, i Probably in this group, I may not say that <laughs> a lot of you probably love math, but there is that barrier of because it's an artificial language that is being introduced in, in between. So, um, and so Sanskrit being a natural language and our progress going towards what is naturally understandable and uh, the human voice box producible, it makes a very uh, good uh, case for being a natural processing language. Okay, so, and then, um, so we talked just about the, in this picture about the Utpatti Sthanas, but there is also, there is a whole bunch of ma mapping about uh, the, the uh, like, you know, Abhyantara Prayatna, means uh, it's where is the origin of the sound coming from the Nabi, like even from that part, there is a whole classification, like Gosha, uh, like, you know, uh, there is a whole classification based on this. And then there is Bahya Prayatna, like Maha Prana, Alpa Prana, like K, K, uh, the amount of, uh, like, Prana you put into pronouncing the Varna. So uh, all of that has been considered while structuring uh, this particular Varnamala. And also, you know, we think we know alphabets, right? When I started in the Vyakarna Shastra, I, I found out that A, uh, for example, a simple letter A, uh, it's actually, it is not just one letter, but it has 18 types. And <laughs> so just one alphabet of A uh, is like, you know, it can be represented or written. There are 18 forms that you can write. For example, you have Hrasra, Dirga, and Pluta. This is based on the duration of how much you say, like, ah, 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 like, you know, one, uh, two, and three matra kalas. Uh, and then there is also um, anudatta, udatta, and swarita. Uh, so in Vedic chanting, uh, the pronunciation becomes very important. Like, you know, uh, like, uh, it is uchai anudatta. That means you're telling in a higher or lower note, right? Um, actually here English translation kind of loses the meaning it's not exactly a uh, high tone or voice but it is this is what it is there is a whole science on how what is Swarita what is Anudata and what is Uldata and here is how it is represented right with a with an underline and with a thing on the top so that is so we have three classifications and each classification again has three of them. And then there is also Anunasika and Asika. Are you using your nasal apparatus while saying a uh or a? Uh? So, um, so like, you know, so then each of them again has Nasika and Anunasika. So you have total 18 types just from the letter A. Uh. And why is this important again from Sanskrit and computer science? See, um, like, you know, in uh, Vedas, I will show a slide. Yeah, this is from Haridas Mahodaya, who is a, 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 a like, you know, fellow what, student. What, yes, please. Previous chart. Mm -hmm. uh, how do we pronounce A and underscore A and uh, A third? So this is... Uh, this is what I'm saying as Anudatta, Udatta, and Swarita. So, like the, in Vedic chanting, right, there is uh, like which goes up and down. Uh, so, like uh, if you see A, uh, A, uh, uh, like you know, so there is, uh, if uh, I had Google once on the, and there is one person who takes each letter and tries to modulate his voice. It's a whole science on how to actually pronounce it. But, um, uh, so that that is what these three classifications are. In Vedas, this th kind of things are used very often. Correct. When that is Plutta. How Plutta could be pronounced? Plutta is the three matra kalas. Like if you're calling someone, for example, Rama, uh, come here, right? Yes. Like if I call my son Aditya, there is a whole oh. extra matra time that Ach. goes into it. Fine. It's Thank a three you. times, yeah. So. And a nasal is like, you know, we have that we can produce, the air can come out from the mouth and the nose as well. And the reason why I'm, uh, I have put this slide is because this is just a, a thought. See, um, like in, 
uh, when artificial, uh, when um, like, you know, Alexa or this kind of natural language processing happens, right? It's very important the tone in which, uh, like, you know, humans can understand that, right? For example, I uh, like, you know, I can say, yeah, right. Or I can say, yeah, right. Right. There is a difference in like, you know, one is like sarcasm or not really. And one is, oh, yeah, right. Right. So that tone in which I'm saying, I'm just using the same words, you are right, but the tone in which I'm saying conveys a different meaning, right? And so that is, I think, the reason why in, uh, they were so particular about even capturing the tone on how it needs to be set. And based on that, the words have different meaning. So when we take the word Veda itself, right, this is, I don't want to spend too much time here, but just want to give a like top level overview like you know if you say it an anuddhatva it has a different uh, meaning and then if you have like you know uh, like vid atput from which the word veda comes means knowledge uh, right with when you say it with that uh, anunasika it and when you say it anuddhatva it also means satya more existence so it is the sign that the knowledge about everything that exists so this is just uh, like you know uh, brief introduction that it is not just uh, the tonal things have a very important uh, place all as well okay and then from Sanskrit perspective from the language perspective I will cover these topics very briefly but there is also the concept of uh, Shabda and Artha so this I'm still not very clear. Um, uh, it means I get a concept, but uh, not, like, you know, still kind of trying to realize what it really means. But what it is in general in the natural is basically every word already has a meaning with it. So uh, like in English, it's a little bit different in the sense uh, when, when we say, for example, uh, chair or uh, like mark or a person's name, it's, mm -hmm. it's a pronoun and that's it. Like, right. He's, that person is always called that. But in uh, Sanskrit, it is a little bit different. Even our uh, like, you know, proper nouns or name of person is not, uh, it is no, not. She works Go ahead, Bhagavan. Rama is uh, like, you know, means somebody that brings joy or Ramyate. And so every name So here I want to give an example, like, you know, one of my uh, fellow uh, uh, students, Praveena, she has done a beautiful analysis of uh, how, uh, like, you know, for example, in Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna addresses Lord Krishna with different names at different uh, parts of the uh, Bhagavad Gita. And the reason being, every time he's trying to bring out a different quality or wanting to emphasize on that quality. So, and that is one of the reasons, for example, Veda Vyasa, right? He, we know he's somebody who compiled the Vedas, but is that his name? Vyasa just mean a compiler or person who does. So the proper nouns as such are more qualitative as well. So that's a very different concept from Sanskrit compared to uh, the, like, you know, uh, other languages. So um, like even proper nouns, are not exactly proper nouns, but you know, you can address a person by different uh, names based on what the person is. So, and, and, and that kind of gives like, you know, a, a very important concept of not like, you know, have, of having meaning tied to every word. So uh, then the second thing is order of words do not matter or does not matter. Like, you know, for example, Rama kills Ravana. And if you tumble the words, Ravana kills Rama, the meaning becomes totally different. But in Sanskritam, it's a little bit different. Like if you say Rama Hatam Ravanam, it always means the same because um, uh, the doer or is already, the word is modified. Each word is modified. Uh, uh, like, you know, with that particular, uh, uh, when you say like, you know, Vibhakti or the person that Prathama Vibhakti is always a Karaka. So even if it, it becomes all tumbled up, the meaning of the sentence remains the same. And this becomes an important uh, programming quality. And also uh, the last thing is uh, there is, even if there is a new word, just because of how the origin of the word is and how it is uh, mapped, 
mapped and there is a process to get to the word even if a person does not know the word and is uh, he knows the sans he knows uh, uh, the basics of sanskrit even a new word given he can easily guess what the meaning is and this is so critical in machine learning and uh, and ai uh because uh, see like you know it, right now based on like you know updating the database or the usage or the accents it's constantly learning right but once if the uh, if there is what if the word is not exposed ever to the computer and if it is given would it still know the meaning and uh, this sanskrit as a language allows to for that to happen and um i think there's a lot of research being done right now on having the uh, non unknown words how does the computer learn about those the words that are not even known so we folks in the for, uh, like you know in the field of natural language processing would probably know all the algorithms and the whole science that is behind that and with sanskrit that is uh, like one of the areas that is amazingly uh, clear because of the structure of the language okay. all right so any i'll stop i'll pause for a second and uh, just want to check any questions anushwarya and amitwarya are there anybody on the chat that yeah we are answering the questions uh, okay i don't i don't think there's anything So proceed on then. Yeah, you can go ahead. Okay, thank you. We'll keep critical questions for you at the end. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> so, right, sure, okay. We'll curate it for you. <laughs> so uh, now uh, like you know so we know about okay uh, the vyakaran of sanskrit is so important right we covered what is vyakaran it's not merely grammar it's about the right usage of the words and has like you know is a pathway to understand the whole knowledge that is there and then we know uh, that hey uh, like you know sanskrit and why is that language so different right and i just put only a few points but there is a whole uh, like you know uh, like area of research that could be done there but then uh, like you know uh, panini maharshi panini his um, like you know he's um, uh, a linguist from approximately 600 bce and uh, he like you know uh, there were vyakarnis or who grammarians before panini as well but his work the ashtadhyayi was like a, is even today one of the most phenomenal works that is out there uh, he has completely uh, like you know just in a very succinct form provided the whole uh, map the whole sanskrit grammar into this work called ashtadhyayi and uh, uh, like you know and uh, like as we go forward in the presentation you will see how uh, he plays such an important uh, role um, actually just so start happened that you know i was doing um, like you know uh, like doing vyakarana studies and my son aditya he had a school project on uh, like you know on writing about somebody who is most influential from the ancient or the past who has very much relevance even today and uh, like you know we were uh, referring to different folks and uh, different people and uh, like you no know, leaders politicians uh, uh, like you know all the uh, like you no know, sages in every uh, like you know background and then uh, we finally decided on uh, uh, like you know panini because when we at uh, the more we read and researched it is amazing the kind of uh, influence that he has and still is not known to so many people like you know uh, i have not heard of panini when i was growing up right so only after starting on this journey of learning vyakarana did i i do so uh, so he com uh, he composed this ashtadhyayi which is a work what is ashtadhyayi basically it is um, he has com uh, he has compiled the whole um sanskrit language into eight chapters like ashta adhyay so uh, so eight chapters or 4000 sutras or rules um and using this uh, this 
rules you can given any of the root word or dhatu you can find out um, like you know uh, you can uh, convert that into a sang uh, in your thought into a sentence which is meaningful and understandable in sanskrit okay so it's 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 complete it's a very um, systematic uh, like you know uh, work that uses the modern concepts of computer science to it is it basically codified language as you say very scientific work and uh, like as we go over this briefly you will get an idea on that and please do keep a check on my time you know i'm watching it but just need to be on track so uh like you know so basically we have all this indic or vedic which was uh, totally non understood uh, but when when um, there was a method or a very clear uh, codified language grammar given uh, it makes us um, uh, add meaning to anything that is there in the vedas so that is the reason where he has completely channeled um, knowledge source and made it available for us to uh, to be able to uh, go back and find out and uh, like you know discover those gems so he created a pathway to decipher uh, the vedic texts that were deemed complicated or abstruse so you like you know you have ayurveda which is coming from rigveda all the um, like you know all all the knowledge that is there can be clearly understood okay and now we'll go briefly into the structure of ashtadhyayi what are these 4000 sutras or rules um, like you know what do they cover and uh, like how is it laid out right so we have uh, uh, we have different kinds these uh, sutras or uh, of ashtadhyayi can be classified into six different parts okay so the first part is like you no know, sanya sangya sutra this is basically like you know definitions right in uh, that is one more thing very specific about indic knowledge that any shastra you take right um, they do not they define the whole glossary or vocabulary again uh, so so that there is no confusion so something that may mean that may hold a particular meaning in one shastra can have a different meaning in a different shastra so it's very important uh, like you know anybody who is uh, like you know starting a shastra will define what what does he mean by that particular word so there is no ambiguity so the sanya sutras are basically what uh, are the definitions so just like how when we start a computer program right you define your variables you define right the definitions are what goes first so ditto uh, here in ashtadhyayi so all the sutras that cover the definitions are called sanya sutrani okay and uh, one of the example i can say is for example vriddhi right uh, when you think about in our natural language vriddhi means something that is growing or some old person right um, like you know that is what it means but in vyakarana it is there, there are basically three alphabets that form uh, what is called vriddhi so he defines that by vriddhi i mean these three like uh, uh, like a i and au so uh, guna means a uh, then a so he defines the those before using okay then the second set of sutras are called paribhasha sutras so these are like you know def, meta def, data basically that de, they define what the definition means right so um like hey when i'm like you know in this particular word maybe um um uh, this letter is not pronounced so you are giving a more detailed definition of like you know of a rule uh, your it's a rule telling you about the rule you see that is what is paribhasha uh, sutrani and um, then there is also vidhi sutras which are functional statements like in computer science right it's a procedure uh, so given this word uh, this gets transformed or converted to this word or if if i'm using this vibhakti go ahead and do this so it's a it's a func function or a procedure so he has exactly very uh, precise and processing with these sutras 
okay then there are also rules or niyam sutras which kind of restrict um, say only if this condition falls true then do this right you're putting a, a on a procedure you're putting a further uh, like you know niyama or a rule okay so you see how how closely mapped when as we we just by seeing the mapping of this sutras into this classification you see how structured it is and that is the reason why with just that 400 or so very small sutras you could completely uh, uh, like you know no sanskrit um, and then there is atidesh uh, sutrani and what atidesha sutrani are basically if it is outside the domain uh, okay so this usually uh, does not apply but in this case you can apply it outside the domain kind of uh, thing and then there is adhikara sutrani or this is like a parent class uh, where you are defining that hey uh, for all the next chunk of uh, code um, this is the like you know main sutra like for example there is something called samhitaya means any time any time two words are joining so that will be the adhikara sutra for all the sutra that are coming below it so um so this is uh, something about the kind of sutras and also what is being covered in ashtadhyayi right so you have um uh, like you know which chapter so there are eight chapters each of it with four padas or four uh, divisions um, and you know like we can't go all over the whole it is this this overview is just to give a brief high level picture and i'm just scratching the surface as well so um and just to give that top view vision on what is it that what is ashtadhyayi like if there are many of you who have not heard the word like i have not just a year back then it is like you know you're and if you are the right adhikari or the uh, person for this you would be amazed at the beauty of how it is laid out um, and if we could codify this and have like you know we have so much smart uh, folks who are well aware of computer science see uh, uh, till now there is this gap you know folks who know uh, vyakarna very well are not versed in computer science then there are these extremely uh, good programmers like you know who can just program about any anything and everything but do not have access to this uh, uh, this text right so that there is this gap of uh, like you know some being in one and i think going in the future this kind of bridge uh, fields are the are where it is you know you uh, you have to have that holistic view just like we have seen in the vidya sananis uh, like you know it's it's a holistic vision and having that vision will help us integrate uh, and uh, make make the next level of progress uh, feel so and so here in uh, in this like in each chapter what is the areas that are covered is mentioned here um, i will uh, no, i'll probably in the next slide maybe i can go a little bit more oh okay i came here already i want to see something oh yeah this Uh, so, um, and, and just to give a little bit of overview, right, in how the um, um, this uh, Sanskrit vakyas are formed or so, there is a set of 2000 dhatus or roots or not roots also. There are the primordial word words from which all the meanings have come so there are just a set of two two thousand out of which the whole language has spanned okay and uh, uh and how this dhatu gets transformed is basically by something called a pratyaya or which is a uh, um what you say suffix okay so when you add that pratyaya to the dhatu then uh there is like you know different words that get formed Be, um there are different kinds of pratyayas that are there and uh, these dhatus are mentioned in a total different uh, text called dhatu pata okay so ashtadhyayi has all the rules and then there is this uh, input data or so that is in dhatu pata so you take one word and then you can go through a set of these uh, procedures or rules in ashtadhyayi and then you come with the end form of the word in the meaning okay so um 
like you know and this may be little bit like you no know, i don't want to like confuse the folks but just want to say that uh, there is this concept of dhatu and even the nouns or proper nouns have the as i just mentioned previously like how ramaha is also has a meaning it's not just a uh, Uh, something that is called but there is a whole inherent meaning on it so that is the concept of dhatu with which gets as a suffix to pratyayas and then forms padam or words okay now why is this uh, let me go back so uh, i think this i covered right how was uh, like you know we have all the sutras different kind of oh yeah this concept of recursion right uh, in ashtadhyayi to keep it very precise there is a concept called anuvritti means basically the words from the previous sutras are uh, like you know are taken down into the next one so you don't have to repeat the whole uh, word um like you know um uh, if you want to say for example um, like rama went to uh, to the um, like you know to a school right he, and then you just say uh, he wrote some books or brought some books you won't say rama again and again correct like you know you can infer that hey it's coming right after the usage of the word first and that's why it means the same person so similarly in the sutras the way panini has it structured is uh, basically he has uh, uh, he, he, this like you know how we do recursion in uh, programming uh, where you uh, inherit the same properties over and over as you go down into further procedures so that is something that i wanted to mention so that by using anuvritti he kept the sutras very very small so i may want to give an example but i probably will get to it in the end uh, so then there is a domain definition where adhikara sutra comes and then all the other sutras in that falls under that domain then of course there is a polymorphism basically what polymorphism in object oriented programming means is uh, like you know in object oriented programming you have the data objects right and then there is methods uh, if if you are not in computer science don't worry just tune off for a second here so there are methods you call these classes right and uh, so you can use the same method for different instances of the objects so uh, and uh, and that is seen as well in ashtadhyayi okay here uh, and um you know where is this this may be a little bit out of place but anyways um yeah so this is one particular um uh, for example one particular sutra in ashtadhyayi so here it it talks about linglakar for folks who know uh, sanskrit little bit uh, there is like you know lakar um, so are basically um, uh, different like you know like tenses kind of roughly they map to tenses so um so here in when you say uh, like no ling lakar basically it is something that indicates an order or so uh, there are um, like you know so just in this one particular sutra you see there are so many kinds of uh, different uh, connotations so when you put this ling pratyaya to a dhatu right ling pratyaya is basically something that makes when you attach to the dhatu just think of it in a very coarse form that it it the tense becomes ling uh, tense right so that means uh, it can say uh, it can denote all this kind of uh, uh, annotations it can be a uh, order or a vidhi it can be invitation it can be permutation it can be a respectful command deliberation or a request so uh, that is how uh, succinct and short and lagu the sutras are so just one sentence can uh, give you so much of information that's there okay now i just want to switch the modes a little bit here and give a very high level and i will map now we uh, we um Uh, covered the concept of um, from the computer science perspective right how how structured ashtadhyayi is and just want to see that there is something called a turing machine which is the first 
ever computer. Even before Charles Babbage, whom we say is the modern computer, they say the Turing machine is the precursor for the current day central processing unit or the CPU, okay? So uh, like, you know, if uh, what basically it means is uh, for, uh, for the person with like, it's a finite state machine. So all in simple layman's terms, what it means is uh, if for example, there is an input being given, and it, it not only considers this particular machine, not only considers what is the input, but also considers what state is the current machine in. And then according to considering its current state, as well as the input, it will give an output. Okay, so that is as simple as uh, what a finite state machine is. So, um, so for example, there is something that is like, for example, your traffic light, right? When it is in green and there is an in input of a car, it uh, if it, like you know there is an input of a car at that road uh, partition and if the light is green, then it knows it is green and it will stay green, right? But for example, if it is red light, for example, and there is a car that triggers it because its state is red, then it knows that it has to turn into green. Correct. And if it is green and there is car in a different direction, then it knows, hey, I have to turn into amber and then from there to red. So it's this is a simple example of finite state machines, right? And uh, so Turing machine is something that what uh, Turing did was he took this finite state, uh, like you know, machine and kind of put it on, made it infinite. Uh, in the sense, he was able to create a machine that would print on a tape. And anything that can be computable or can be calculated uh, can be, if it is, uh, it, it, it can be done by a Turing machine. It's just a matter of splitting it down into instructions and instructions. And if it is computable, it can be coded or can be done by a Turing machine, automated by a Turing machine. So, and um, so Panini's Ashtadhyay, even in uh, right now, even on the sources, on the web and on different, uh, like, you know, academia, it is believed that Panini's uh, was one of the uh, conceptually the original person who gave rise to the Turing machine. Okay. And uh, uh, so I, the reason I'm saying it because this plays a very critical role uh, later. And Alan Turing, just to when we were doing our research, uh, like Aditya and myself, we found out that his father was, he's from UK. And in those times, his father was uh, with the had uh, was uh, from British India in India, and he had very much exposure to Panini's uh, Ashtadhyayi. So though uh, though Turing was educated here, uh, he had very his family had very tight connections with India, and you know um, so the concepts like you know uh, uh, might have originated from Panini uh, Panini's work. So. And okay, um, this is one more um, tagging and the uh, usage of metadata is done very brilliantly in Ashtadhyayi. And what it is, is basically what are data tags, right? When you have, for example, in telecom or so, uh, for every data packet, like uh, when you are from point A to point B, you want to send your data or through a, like, you know, wireless network or so, there is a tag that has the address, right? That says, hey, based on the tag, it says the data is the same, but it tells, do, does it go to Washington or does it go to uh, like, you know, Bangalore or does it go to Chennai or Hyderabad? Right? Right? So the tagging is what uh, helps the data to move in. And similarly, um, like, you know, uh, uh, the, the Panini uses these tags brilliantly in his work, Rashtadhyayi. So uh, uh, what he uh, did was he rearranged the alphabets, uh, like, you know, the way that we learn the Varnamala, A, A, E, E, right? He rearranged it in a little bit different form. And uh, his inspiration, this is called, these are the 14 sutras that form the basic of the work. And they're called Maheshwara Sutrani. And the reason is because he heard a kind of Shiva's Jamru in his head uh, that, uh, that inspired him to come with this order of alphabets. And uh, so, uh, so this is basically what, it, what the sutras, Maheshwara Sutrani are, it's a little bit of rearrangement of the Varnamala. So that, um, so he had this called, just like we talked about tags, he had this tag letters in between 
and these tag letters are basically um, used um, for um, data packaging like for example right um, i want to show maybe this may not be clear how much time do we have okay anyways uh, uh, so um, like you know here if we have for example this was one of the concepts that took me a little bit like you know being fresh to ashtadhyayi um, uh, like in uh, when it was being uh, said by our guru varya it it didn't make sense like what is a damru to do with it the whole and not knowing sanskrit very fluently also took a while but uh, for any of the seekers right basically if you're looking or studying it's a very important concept of it just basically alphabets rearranged with some tag letters in between like you know so i e un this is the first sutra okay rule look this is the second sutra maheshwar so there are 14 of these like you know uh, from here to here then this to this like so the 14 sutras right and what they mean is basically the last letter that is circled in each sutra is uh, basically called the it letter uh, and it simply means that it is just a tag it won't play it won't be part of the word when you have it and then what panini brilliantly does is based on what this it letter is he says okay if the it letter is for example na follow this program or do this if the it letter is ta then you know uh, you you follow this procedure or so he brilliantly directed his data to go into form different forms of words and uh, that uh, metadata concept is very very uh, uh, like you know uh, it it just is makes this program so uh, programmable so i had to mention this because this is a very core con concept in uh, ashtadhyayi and now we'll come towards uh, like so i'm pretty much towards the end here so now you see how right uh, with in in compute this is a very like you know basic ai picture right so you have computer science here then you have linguistics here and then there is a natural processing language uh, that is as close to our human language that a computer can understand right and then there is the fields of artificial intelligence where which has a whole scope and then there is machine learning uh, like you know which helps continuously the machines improve correct so this is and now if when when we we saw this picture and we were reading about ashtadhyayi and panini like you know his work spans the whole gamut so in computer science for example the turing machine that he is the is supposed to be the originator of is the basic of the cpu here the hardware part the linguistics the whole uh, sanskrit vyakarana that he put together and uh, the morphology of the language falls into linguistics which is so uh, which again he is a part of and then the work of uh, like you know, ashtadhyayi how it clubs together uh, basically is like you know brilliantly clubs too so he spans this whole gamut and that is why i feel his work is so critical in the future um, just understanding his work will give us a lot of insights into the future application okay so here are some slides about uh, sanskrit and i will show a video like what all i have said in this one hour we had put together in a two minute video that i would like to present <laughs> that is from my son as he was doing the project so I will, um, so he, he, and because of that project from school and the amount of paper reading that he did, we were able to find this uh, beautiful connection between the three totally different areas and all was tying to this one person, Panini and Ashtadhyayi so brilliantly. Okay, so I will play, play that video and uh, thank you, Aditya. I don't know if you're watching, but <laughs> so the Turing machine that we covered, everything will fall into place. Okay, one second. Let me play that. I think I scaled it here somewhere. Can you still see my screen? Yes. can you hear the uh, words as well or because sometimes in zoom i know it doesn't play the audio when i'm sharing were you able to hear his voice 
No, we couldn't. Okay. Mm, I don't know now how to make that work. You can you can probably uh, share the link if it's on YouTube or something and the organizers can oh, okay. share it with the participants. Okay. Yeah, I'll share that. Or you can send it to me. I will share it with Nikunj. Okay. I don't know if it is on YouTube. Do we have it on YouTube yet? Okay. This would probably be a good time to put it. <laughs> yeah. Maybe um, let me see if I can play the audio with my phone. Or then no, that's okay. Otherwise, I'll share the video as a link uh, to the conversation. But it in in just two minutes, it uh, it sees how beautiful it ties the whole concepts together. So yeah. How do I get out of this? Yeah, just play it on your uh, mobile close to the microphone. Mm -hmm. And then play the video simultaneously. There might be a little bit sync problem. Okay, Honey, can you uh, open your uh, phone so that I can play there the voice for the Zoom session? Just unmute that. So in the meantime, while we do that, I can just go back to my presentation. Yes, yes. Please complete that and leave some time for questions. Uh -huh. uh, at, yes. least, at least three questions for you. From. <laughs> okay. So here, um, like, you know, so we have, uh, uh, like, you know, the whole holistic well-being aspect of the Vedas and here, like, you know, not only in the computer science field, but also, uh, as a channel of all of this information, we like you know it plays a very critical role. Let's start there. So this is the final slide, I think. Yeah. So with that, I think I'm pretty much covered. So let me stop sharing. Any questions, guys? Do we need to um, unmute Amit Varya or? No, I'll ask on their behalf. I will quote okay. their name and ask. So Sounds Nilesh, Nilesh Patilji wanted to know what is the reference for this uh, three doshas you mentioned for students as part of the Anubandha Chatushtayam. So he's asking where you got it from. Um, it is there in various shastras, uh, you know, not um, in various shastras, wherever they cover Anubandha Chatushtayam, this time they do cover about these three doshas. I, I I googled quite a number of places, so because I was surprised when I found that you know you only need uh, you only need to have two. I was it did not add up, right? There are three doshas, and why are they saying that you cannot have two? But what is the third one that you can still have as an adhikari? So yeah, I can send a link when we send it. Okay, then the second question from Subramani ji is, is it true mm -hmm. that Sanskrit has logic built into the grammar structure so that illogical statements are caught by the grammar itself? So, um, so I, like, are you, by what do you mean by illogical? Um, so if, See, sometimes the grammar may be right, but it cannot, it may not make uh, uh, sense, right? Like, for example, if I say uh, he was flying, correct? So it is grammatically correct, but uh, does it mean he's flying in an airplane or does it mean he actually is flying, right? Is that what you mean by illogical? Yeah, so if I can add to that, uh, Radhika ji. Um... So basically, when you say logic, it could be at different levels. So mm -hmm. one is the uh, grammar itself will tell you whether the words in the sentence are formed correctly. Uh, it can tell you that whether there are any correct or whether all the words are correctly formed or whether there are ill formed words that it can tell you. Uh, but then you would also have to use other um, 
shastras like logic itself nyaya shastra to understand what is it talking about what real world objects and relations is it talking about and is are those relations that the sentence is trying to convey is it consistent can it be proved mm -hmm. by different means like pramanas so mm -hmm. you can use that or if there are multiple sentences then you can use uh, uh, the uh, concepts from mimamsa shastra to uh, put the different sentences together into one logical sentence which is called ekavakyata so uh, there are different shastras and as radhika ji said it forms a integrated and holistic uh, knowledge system so mm -hmm. that uh, different shastras play their own role so uh, yeah. vyakaran because sanskrit is a morphological morphologically rich language the focus of most of paninian grammar is on how correct words are formed because in sanskrit unlike in english which is syntactic in english the focus is more on the sequence exact sequence of words for example ram kill ravan and ravan kill ram mean exactly the opposite but mm -hmm. because in sanskrit the meaning is encoded to a large extent in the word itself so uh, when you say rama ravanam hanti or ravanam rama hanti it means the same thing because mm -hmm. the role of each word is given by the ending on the word not by the position of the word so it can the grammar can tell you whether these words are correct and whether they make sense in the sentence mm -hmm. but beyond that for the word world level meaning uh, relation etc you have to make use of the other shastras yeah. as well so is there a program or demo built to show ai using sanskritam mukesh ji that is <laughs> something Not, we can build i think many people are working the on it the whole gamut is open <laughs> yes um the, the one more question is uh, is there a book or paper on uh, this is from mohit joshi ji uh, on the on ashtadhyayi with the programming concepts so i think somebody there, already there, yeah. mm -hmm. no. on that uh, there are actually many many sources uh, uh, like you know um, in all the academy in, uh, yeah and the britannica we uh, refer to many online uh, published sources of uh, for this particular concepts and presentation so i can provide the citations there is um, like you know subhash kak uh, ji's articles then there was um, the jas they have done uh, many research and then there is also some from western authors Germ german authors they have quite a bit of uh, mapping of sanskrit